two, one. Oliver Stone's brilliant, still controversial movie, JFK, brought to the forefront the most disturbing of all the conspiracy theories, the idea that elements of the U.S. government were involved in the plot to kill the president. Stone has been pilloried for his thesis, but he's hardly alone. Attorney General Robert Kennedy suspected the mob and Jimmy Hoffa were involved in the murder, then later included the CIA. The widow, Jackie Kennedy, never believed Oswald acted alone. She thought Vice President Lyndon Johnson gave the green light. Someone else who knew a bit about conspiracies, President Richard Nixon, felt LBJ had presided over a coup by having the president killed. And Johnson himself told close friends he thought the Cubans had arranged the hit, then later thought the CIA was directly involved. If we had had cell phones, on November 22nd, 1963, the case would have been solved that afternoon and there would be a dozen prominent Americans hanging for the conspiracy and the killing of John Kennedy. Las Vegas John Barber's interest in the case is both personal and patriotic. John Barber! In the 70s, he was the host and producer of the most popular TV show in the country, but his career stopped in its tracks when he tried to publicize the work of New Orleans District Attorney Jim Garrison, portrayed in the film by Kevin Costner. That's the FBI there, all right? That's the CIA. Barber wanted to put Garrison on national TV to talk about the only criminal case ever prosecuted in the JFK murder. Instead, Barber was fired. He pressed on anyway and produced his own film about Garrison, in which the lawman made the case that Lee Oswald had been a patsy. Lee Harvey Oswald killed no one at all. He felt that the CIA was telling Lee Harvey Oswald that there's a plot to kill the president and we want you to infiltrate that. And that's how they set him up. As soon as the word leaked out that Garrison was investigating the JFK murder, a campaign was launched against the DA. It's now well established that Garrison's office was infiltrated, his phones bugged, and the government wouldn't allow him to interview witnesses. And all these subpoenas were torn up by the government and thrown away. I mean, they literally broke the law to prevent Jim Garrison from prosecuting Clay Shaw. If Garrison's case was as weak as critics said it was, Barber wonders why the CIA went to so much trouble to sabotage it and to smear Garrison. Why not let the case collapse on its own in court? Forensic historian Patrick Nolan is not a big fan of Garrison's, but says there's no doubt the CIA did a number on him. He knew early on uh, that the people that uh, were connected with Lee Harvey Oswald uh, we're also connected with the CIA and we're connected with the mob. So I think he started to put pieces together and uh, they, they shut that down pretty quick. The heart of Garrison's case was that Oswald, a supposed die-hard communist, had been working with anti-communist Cubans funded by the CIA, that he had plotted to kill Kennedy with CIA pilot David Ferry and businessman Clay Shaw, suspected of being a CIA operative. But Garrison's evidence received scant coverage by media, no surprise to John Barber. In the mid-70s, the church committee conducted investigations and hearings into the operations of the Central Intelligence Agency. And George, in the mid-70s, they found out the CIA had over 1,000 assets working in television, radio, newspapers, and magazines. That was in the 70s. Can you imagine what they have now? The cover-up started long before Garrison's case, though. The Kennedys had been at war with the CIA over the failed Bay of Pigs invasion and had fired longtime CIA chief Alan Dulles. The fact that Dulles became a member of the Warren Commission spoke volumes. And most of the investigatory legwork for the commission was carried out by FBI agents under the direction of J. Edgar Hoover, another avowed enemy of the Kennedy brothers. It's no accident the Warren report ignored possible motives and involvement by the CIA and FBI. Even writers who think Oswald acted alone agree there was a cover-up. They certainly lied and covered up evidence after the assassination. We know now they were trying to cover up their hits on Castro or their attempted hits with the mob. The people who actually carried out or masterminded the plot, intentionally muddied the waters from the very beginning. What did you do in Russia?